brothers. So let's go to the passage. I just thought I'd share that with y'all in my travels. Psalm 40, verses 6 through 8. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you do not require. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. Verse 8. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law, your word, your commandments, your precepts are written within my heart. Thus far, God's word be seated in the presence of the Lord. Beloved, one of the sad realities of our times, especially uh, Uncle George Deacon Murray, as it relates to the Christian faith, is not just the um, erroneous views that many have of this faith mic that we hold so dear, but along with it, Smitty, are the disparaging ways in which many people talk about our faith as well. If you were to um, ask the average person what their view of Christianity is and what is their view of the Christian life, you would most likely uh, hear words, O'Neill, like harsh, stern, dull, boring, legalistic, unloving, critical, and the list could go on and on. And, and beloved, what's amazing to me is that so many who hold those views have not had any real contact or experience with Christ or with his church. And Hershey, I'm not going to say it, and those who have had some experience with the church and experience with believers have had built the misfortune of often running into poor examples of what it means to live the Christian life. I I'm convinced, Tony, and I hope you won't get mad at me, I'm convinced that sometimes Christians uh, I'll use that word Larry sparingly, but because of where I'm going, I'll say it. I'm convinced that some Christians, quote unquote, are the worst examples of the Christian faith anybody could find. There are some people, don't look around, just look straight ahead. And if I'm not talking about you, then I'm not talking about you. But there are some people in our churches who, who make up the ranks of our membership who are poor examples of what it means to live the Christian life. They are bitter, they are mean, they are angry, they are nasty, they are mean-spirited. Just keep looking at me. Amen. And they walk around with a chip on their shoulder. They are short-tempered. They have very short fuses. They fly off the handle at a moment's notice. All you got to do is look at them to unleash a whole venomous string of words. And then they want to talk about praise the Lord, blessed, highly favored. <laughs> Gene said to say, that some of the folks sitting up in some other churches, not in this church, are poor examples of what it means to be a believer. And because of that, because of that, there are Deacon Skelton men and women who look harshly upon us, not because they've encountered Christ, but they've encountered poor examples of Christ. 
It's sad. It's sad, Helen, that the average, and, and you will allow me to say this, will you not? And I say it with love, and I say it with tenderness, and I say it with concern. That, that the reason some of us, I didn't say you, the reason some of us have such a hard time witnessing to our family, to our children, to our siblings, to our relatives, is they ran into some bus or Christian who just ripped them from one end to the other and now they want to have nothing to do with the church. Can I preach in here? Since, since I'm on a roll, uh, I'll just keep going. But Lee hinted, and, 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 it is not just folk in the pew. I took off my glasses, so if you look at me, I really can't tell it. it. It is not just folk in the pew. It's some fellas in the pulpit who have given the church a bad name. It is the going on and the carrying on and the conduct, or should I say, the misconduct of some Reverend Dr. Bishop Elder that has turned not only the minds of people, but turned the stomachs of some folk who have said, if that's what it means to be a Christian and that's what it means to be a preacher, then thank you, but no thank you. I'll just do the best I can and trust God will grade me on the curve. It's sad that uh, many, many people have this uh, disparaging view of what it means to live the Christian life. Aunt Eula, if you would ask the average person, try it. In, no, well, don't do it. But if you were brave enough to do it tomorrow on your job, and ask somebody, tell me, what, what do you think of the Christian life? How, how would you describe it? They would say, oh, uh, it's, 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 it's harsh, it's tough, it's cruel, it's boring, it's dull. And really, they ain't talking about the life, they're talking about some folk they know. The reason why I bring that up, O'Neill, the reason why I bring that up is because would you be surprised that while that is the view of the world, it is not the view of those of us who truly know Jesus for ourselves. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. That, 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 that in reality, in reality, those of us who know God and walk with God and experience life with God know the wonderful thrill of having God in our lives. And that's why, that's why on this Father's Day, I want to proffer, I want to suggest, I want to present a theological hypothesis to you and suggest that part of serving God can be and ought to be a delight. Okay, okay. I missed y'all. And, and my Mary, here's what I mean. Sister Yvonne, here's what I mean. The word delight, I looked it up, means a high degree of pleasure or enjoyment. Something that gives, are y'all ready for this? Great pleasure. Now, I done lost all of y'all, Siobhan. I done lost all of y'all. You know, because I feel y'all right now. Some of y'all say, no, all right, Pastor. All right. You, I, we know you've been traveling. You must have jet lag. All right. Now, I like the Lord, I love the Lord, but I wouldn't describe my walk with God as pleasurable. <laughs> I mean, come on, you just said that pleasure is a high degree of enjoyment, something that gives great pleasure. That, now, now, Reverend, 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 that sounds kind of risque. That sounds kind of sexual. I've had some things. Erica, look straight at me. I've had some things that brought me great pleasure and I wasn't thinking about Jesus. <laughs> look how quiet that part of the church is getting. 
I love it when I can, see I can't preach this on the road. I got to preach this at home among folk who know me. <laughs> I know y'all thinking, now wait a minute here. I love the Lord, but pleasure? Delight? No, but can I, can I tell you this morning that that ought to be the way that we experience God in our lives? He ought, it ought to be a delight to serve him. And it ought to bring us somebody holler pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about that. I thought about that. But chairman, but vice chairman, I thought about that. Songs we used to sing. We don't sing them no more. We, Mike, we don't sing them anymore. I promise y'all, before I leave, I'm going to make y'all sing every hymn I know. <laughs> and then y'all will be ready for me to go. <laughs> Songs like, you don't know this, when I will sing hallelujah for there's joy in the Lord. And he fills my heart with rapture as I rest in his word. I will trust in his promise. I will shout, I am free in my blessed Lord and Savior. I have sweet victory. There is joy in the Lord. There is joy in the Lord. Hallelujah, glory, glory. There is joy in the Lord. There is joy. That's the chorus. There is joy in the Lord. Hallelujah, glory, glory. There is joy. Joy in the Lord. Or oh, what about this one? The service of Jesus, true pleasures afford. In him there is joy without an alloy. Tis heaven to trust him and rest on his word. It pays to serve Jesus each day. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays to serve Jesus. Serve Jesus. Though the pathway to glory may sometimes be drear, you'll be happy each step of the way. What about this one? True joy is mine since I left the dreary way. A friend divine is with me every day. To his hand I cling while the gloomy shadows fall. Of his love I sing. He's now my all in all. Some glad day has set up some. Battles fought. Victory won. I shall go to be with him, precious friend divine, in that palace over there, free from sorrow, pain, and care. I will keep on singing. True joy is mine. Do you know anything about any of that? Okay, it's getting quiet. It's getting quiet. That's all right. I've learned to preach without amens. Do you, do, do, does your life resemble that in any way? Or are you one of them sad sack Christians walking around with a cloud of gloom and despair over your head? Where is the true joy? Where is the blessedness? Where is the pleasure? It pays, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Lee, it pays to serve. Somebody holler, it pays to serve him. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world can afford today than to be the king or the queen of a vast domain or be held by sin's drift sway. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this whole world can afford. There's joy in the Lord, beloved. Okay, it got quiet. Nobody in second church believes me. There's joy in the Lord. And I am not going to let the world or the devil or my circumstances or the situations of life rob me of my joy. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know, somebody holler, I know. He watched Ricky, I know he does. Within my sickness, in my suffering, while I'm waiting on the test result, when I don't know what tomorrow will bring to me, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know. Oh, hallelujah. I know. I don't think. I don't suppose. I don't hope. I know. 
he's watching over me. Linda, that's it, baby. That's it. It's the joy of the Lord. Nehemiah told them they weeping and wailing. The joy of the Lord. Who is your strength? Oh, I got to leave it alone. I better leave it alone. I better leave it alone because I feel preach on me today. And, 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 and do you know, Deacon Logan, Pop Logan, do you know what blesses me, Lynette, about this? Them songs I just quoted that none of y'all knew, but Elder Deacon Ernie Williams, the only one knew it. Do you know what blessed me is when I remembered when those songs were written. It was in a far different time. Those folks didn't drive Teslas. They didn't live in the suburbs. They did not have much of the creature comforts of life. But they talked and they sang and they talked about the joy of the Lord. And here we've got all of that. And we're still whining and complaining and upset. Where is your joy? God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Would you look at the neighbor and say, get your joy back. Stop letting stuff take your joy. Who told you life was not going to have struggle? Who told you life would not be tough? But he promised I'll never leave you. I won't forsake you. I'll be with you always. Somebody reach up and grab that joy and tell joy, come back, come back, come back. That's Randall Jr. That's 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 what you got to get, son. Got to get you a dose of joy. I saw Deacon Yolanda Cox, Deacon Richard Cox come in. She's got to go, Marilyn, bury her dad this week. Yolanda, that's how you're gonna make it. Get you a dose of joy. Because joy is not happy. Happy is happenstance. Happy is external. Joy is internal. You can have joy even when you're sad. Somebody holler, get your joy back. That's, that's, that's how we used to sing. We used to sing, will y'all forgive me, Deacon Hairston? don't let them call a meeting on me, vote me out. We used to sing songs about him, which is why they're called hymns. Now we sing songs about us. service of Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus. Joy in the Lord. <laughs> Songs about him. <laughs> because him will help you. <laughs> in the words of my grandma, my grandma might say, ain't God good? Grandma say, yes he are. <laughs> yes he are. Would, would you be would you be a little more surprised if I told you that isn't only how we say. It's not just our hymnody that used to lift up the exuberance, the excitement. Yeah, even the delight, the pleasure of serving Jesus. It's the scriptures too. Like Psalm 1, blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, who does not stand in the way of sinners, who does not sit in the seat of the scornful. But, he, are y'all ready? But, but their delight. Don't come for me if I don't sin for you. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law doth he or she meditate, Darrow day and night. What, what, what about Psalm 37, 4? You ready? Delight thyself in the Lord. And what will he do, church? He will give you the desires of your heart. I want, I've been talking about one delight. <laughs> I delight to 
do your will. Oh, my God. That, that, that's, that's new. I'm so glad you're back. You ain't bring my girl with you by yourself today. I'm glad to see you good by yourself. I'm glad to see you just by yourself. It's what, it's what David does in Psalm 40. You get home today, read it. That's your homework assignment. Read Psalm 40. Psalm 40 is a marvelous passage. It, um, it opens up with this, mar it really is a, a hymn. It really is. It, it's a song. It's a song of praise. It's a song of thanksgiving. But we'll see in a moment it's more than that. Because in Psalm 40, David has come through a dark and difficult time in his life. One commentator said it this way, Deacon Hairston, smooth waters mean smooth sailing. Rough waters, however, test what we are made of. And Rebnan, who commands the ship? In the storms of life, the question is, will our faith hold in times of trial? Will God's promises stand? And Robin, part of the answer to those queries is in what we know about God, wait a minute, from the past who he has been to us, and what he has done for us. Y'all don't know where to shout. That's a good place to shout. Smooth waters mean smooth sailing, but it's on the stormy sea of life that your faith is raised to a level you could not have imagined. Will your faith hold? Will God do his promise and fulfill it? And the answer to the question is found in what I know about God already. What God, I wish I had a church here. What God has done for me yesterday. Okay, let me try this side of the church. I haven't preached to y'all. Let me turn to my right. Do I have anybody over here to the far right who can testify God has a track record in my life and I can look back over my life Hey, all right, all right, all right. Here it is. And see where God has brought me from. Okay, okay, y'all. Would you tap a neighbor and say, he's brought me from a mighty long way. He's bought me. He's bought me. He's bought me. He's bought me. Look, look, look at verse one. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me. He heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock. He established, I don't know why y'all still sitting down. He established, okay, y'all waiting on verse three. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Do I have anybody up in here on Father's Day? God's given you a new song to sing. You were singing the blues. But now you sing an amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Blessed assurance Jesus is mine. Is anybody here you got a new, somebody holler, new song, new song. Woo. Psalm 40, I'm, I'm through. I'm through, I'm getting old. My preaching meter is running out. Oh Lord. Psalm 40, don't laugh. Don't laugh, Chuby. She laughing at her dad because she know I'm old. <laughs> Psalm 40 is a hymn of gratitude in which David looks back. Everybody says looks back. Sees all that God has done for him. The deliverance, the help, the victories. And David, here's a shout, here's a shout. David doesn't just give God praise. Watch this. He gives God his life. We see it, we see it, Lee Hinton, in verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O God. Some scholars might say that this is a messianic psalm and that the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 10 and 7 picks up what David says in Psalm 40. Here's how the writer of Hebrews says it. Then said I, Jesus talking, behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written to me to do your will, O oh God. There it is, there it is, there it is. David, Jesus, and you and I. 
our chief delight, Viv, ought to be, especially on this Father's Day, to do the will of the Father. Not as a burden, not as a chore, not as grief, but as a joy, as a delight. I delight to do your will. Is that your testimony today? Or did you come in here under threat of punishment? You don't go to church. You don't go to church today. I'm going to get you. you ain't gonna, I won't cook if you don't come to church. That's, that's bribery. You ought to be like the psalmist. I was glad. I don't have no glad folk. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Well, well, well here it is, Bill. Here, here it is, Vic. How does that happen? How do you, oh, I'm up here preaching all this stuff, sweating out my suit. How, how does that happen? How does that happen? Well, I think there are three ways, the, Sylvia, that um, we make the will of God a delight. Here's the first one. The will of God becomes a delight when I realize that God's will is best for me. Oh, Nicole, they, they, they don't see it. They don't, they, they don't see it. They don't see it. Uh, it. It is, see, when I know God's will is best, that God ain't trying to run a game on me. Psalm, I'm sorry, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. But you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Why? So that you might prove what is that good and acceptable, drum roll, perfect will of God. The will of God becomes a delight. I, I'm, not, I'm not chafing under God's will today. Many of you are online, online. Sister Marilyn Matthews, above uh, Bill Gardner, online. Sister Douglas, Minister Fabian Fisher. There are a lot of folk in this room and online around this country, various parts of the world. You're chafing under the will of God. You're chafing under it. I want to preach you to a place where it starts becoming painful and it becomes a delight. And that will start, stay with me, beloved, when you understand God's will is best for your life. Amen. Write these three things down. A, God's will for my life has already been determined. I, but Burns, glad to see you back. I heard you went to your granddaughter's graduation. Glad you made it back. Watch, watch this, watch this. Watch this. God didn't come up with a plan for Pop Burns when he was born. Pop Burns was born because God had a plan for his life. Oh, I wish I had a half a church up in here. See, see, Kim, God didn't come up with a plan for me. Oh, God, here he comes. What are they going to name the baby? Timothy. Oh, that's a nice name. Now, what shall I... Hmm... What will I make of little Timmy? <laughs> no, 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 no. God had a plan for my life, so I had to be born. Woo, I wish y'all would get it. It would change the way you look at yourself in the mirror tomorrow morning. That you are not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are not a blunder. You are part of God's plan and God had you on your on his mind before your mama and daddy ever got together. You had to be born because God had a plan for you. The plan of God for your life has already been determined. Watch this. The plan of God for your life has already been designed. So what that word there, that word there, uh, perfect will of God, it's like a perfect fit. I'm, I don't think my wife will mind. If, if you mind me telling this story, stand up and I'll stop. Stop. <laughs> She's standing up. She's going to stand by faith. <laughs> the other Sunday, she, um, she was taking her clothes out she was going to wear. And, and so I saw what she was going to wear. And when she got to the office, I always get here early. When she got to the office, Chris, she didn't have it on. And I said, that's not what you had out. I said, what's the matter? It didn't fit. She said, no, it fit too good. <laughs> 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 
She said, she said wasn't that it didn't fit? Oh, it fit. And that's why I didn't wear it. God's plan and will for your life is like that. It fits you good. I wish I had a witness up in here. In other words, it ain't hanging off you. You don't have to put safety pins all on the side and pull it in the back. Like, like, like a designer suit, Mike, like that stuff you be wearing. It, it, it fits you. It fits you. It's designed. Now, let me say this, and I'll move on, because I don't want to only have 12 minutes. Let me say this, which means you got to stop wearing other folks' clothes. Hey, Ryan, 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 you, you hear me, son? I'm so glad to see you see me after church, all right? You, you, you got to stop wearing other folks' stuff. It's like David with Saul. Saul wanted to give him his armor. David clanging around, and he said, I can't. He, he said, take this off. I can't wear this doesn't fit me. You don't look good in anybody else's will of God but yours. Stop trying to be somebody else. Am I preaching real good or what? Am I preaching good, Elder Jerome? Come on, you stop trying to be Jake's. I was, I was, I was in the Delta Club yesterday um, waiting on my plane, so I'm sitting in the Delta Club, and you know me, I, hello, hello, how are you, how are you? I came to see what gate I'm leaving from, and the man was saying, he said, that voice sounds like somebody I know, and I said, oh, bless you, and I went in, in, in the Delta Club, got me some libation, <laughs> lemonade, and uh, he walked up to me. Now, you know, people walk up on you all the time. He walked up on me. He said, remember what I said to you? I said, yes. He said, I figured it out. I said, you did? I knew he was going to say, T.D. Jakes, that's who you sound like. I said, oh, really? I said, he's a good friend of mine. He's a wonderful man of God. You know him? Yes. You sound just like him. Really? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I don't care who you want to be. You better learn to be yourself. You look better being yourself than you look being, in, hey Warren, than you look being anybody else. Tell a neighbor, be yourself, be yourself. <laughs> will of God has been designed for you, determined for you. Here, see, I got to hurry. God's will for my life and your life, watch this, watch this, Daryl, is being directed daily. So, Daryl, you know, all the volunteer work you do, what you do on your job, how you help, how you mentor. See, that's, a, see, that's all of God's will being directed and played out in your life every day. Big ways, small ways, sometimes seemingly inconsequential ways. When you just do, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living will not be in vain. Well, here's a second. I hurry. The will of God becomes a delight when I receive the blessings and benefits of his will. See, once you tap into the will of God, I have 10 minutes. Once you tap into the will of God, certain things just naturally still happen in your life. Here's a first thing that happens in your life is in the will of God, you get gain a revelation. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Write it down. Read it when you get home. It's the story of the conversion of Saul on the road to Damascus. And uh, you, you know the dialogue. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Saul answers, who are you, Lord? Jesus answered, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Saul, what would you have me do? Pop, did you see? Pop, I'll be so glad when you get back where you belong because you over there, I hear you over there and you probably sitting over here and I'm all confused. <laughs> no, notice, notice. He gets the revelation as he seeks his will. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. What's your will for my life? Okay, I'm going to ask it. Sister Williams, I'm going to ask it, and I may not get an answer. 
Have you ever asked God what he wants you to do? For real, for real, for real. Pop James, listen to me. You, Pop is 90 years old. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Pop, even at your age, you ought to be asking God every day, and what would you have me do? Look how quiet the saints got. Well, I'm old now. Loretta, you ain't that old. Are you still inhaling and exhaling? Is God still waking you up every morning? The only reason you're not sleeping the slumber of death is because there's something Deacon Rosie Dowdy, he still wants you to do. And your first question ought to be, not what am I going to eat for breakfast, not what am I going to wear, not what car am I going to drive. Your first question ought to be, good morning, Lord, what would you have me do today? What is your will in my life. I told y'all that story about Pop Choi, Dr. Leon Troy, Pop Choi, everybody call him Pop Choi. Pop Choi was in the military and he says when he gets up in the morning, he's in a facility now, but he says when he gets up in the morning, he says, good morning Lord, Leon Troy reporting for duty. <laughs> you ought to say that tomorrow. Good morning Lord, Dee Dee reporting for duty. Good morning, Lord Cynthia Slaughter Pate reporting for duty. Good morning, Lord O'Neill reporting for duty. What would you have me do? And then I'm going to leave it alone. And then sit down until he tells you. Don't jump right up. All right, that's it. Thank you. No, sit there and wait to hear what. Is this helping anybody? Here's B. You get a revelation. Will of God becomes a delight when I receive the blessings and benefits of it. First blessing is revelation. The second blessing is relationship. Matthew 12, 50. Jesus is preaching and teaching. I got all these Larrys sitting up here. Larry with the beard. <laughs> got Larry over there, Larry over there, Larry up there. I got Larrys everywhere. Jesus is preaching and word gets to his family that he's preaching. Uh, Sylvia is sitting behind First Lady. I got a bunch of Sylvias too. And um, they get word he's preaching and crowds are coming and they, uh, they're, they're worried about him. They think he done gone loco. And so they go to Jesus and crowd is there and so they send, say, go tell him his family's here. Jesus said, oh really? My family. Hmm. He said, who is my family? <laughs> What's right there in the Bible? See, y'all don't read the Bible. Vanessa, they don't read the Bible. Jesus says, oh, really? My family is here? My, mm -hmm. Oh, who are they? Who's my family? Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Who are my sisters? Who is my family? Want the answer? Whoever does the will of my father. Oh, look, look at that little paltry applause y'all just gave. Jesus wasn't playing the dozens. He was telling the truth. That real family is not about last name. Real family is about your connection to the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. That's why we don't call each other Mr. and Mrs. up in here. We call each other brother and sister and mom and pop because we, somebody holler with me, we're family. It's a relationship. It's a relationship. And then here's three. Here's C rather. It's a reward. The blessing and benefits of the will of God, I delight in God's will when I am a recipient of his blessings and benefits of revelation, a relationship, and then a reward. 2 Timothy 4, 6-8, I preach many a pastor's funeral, Vanessa, and I often lift this passage when I'm sending preachers home. I am now ready to be offered up. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. 
I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me at that day. You ready? Not just to me only, but to all those who love his appearing. Do you know what you got waiting on you? Let me try it back here. Do you have any idea what's waiting on you? Oh, God, I thank you. I was, um, I'm, I'm almost through, Deacon Skelton, I'm almost through. I, uh, I was reading a friend of mine, I'll tell you who he is, Dr. Emil Thomas, pastored for many years in East Palo Alto. He's now retired. And uh, one of his colleagues died. And um, Dr. Emil Thomas uh, was putting a tribute on, the, on Facebook this week, and I read it. He, he tells this story. He says he talked to this gentleman, uh, I will not call his name, but he talked to this pastor friend of his just about a week before he died. He said, we talked for over an hour. He said, um, he said to me, because Emil's daughter died uh, last year, and I reached out to him because I know what that's like. I know what that's like. I, I know what that's like. So I reached out to, to Dr. Thomas. And he said his friend was talking about the death of Emil's daughter, who he called his little queen. And then he started telling Dr. Emil Thomas about his complications. He had been very ill. He said his doctor told him that the series of illnesses he had was akin to hitting the lottery three days in a row. It just don't happen. Doesn't happen. And he talked about how he had gotten his PhD, how he had pastored, grown a church, moved his church to another facility, the favor of God on his life. And he said, but you know, Emil, I'd give it all up to have my health back. And then he said, his friend said to him, talking about the Odyssey, he said, I don't think we'll get these questions answered about your daughter and my health until we get to heaven. This is a week before he died. He said, Mother Sanders, he said, but then he threw me a curveball. He said, but Emil, I have a suspicion that when we see the face of Jesus, all our questions will evaporate. That all the stuff I want God, I want God to tell me why. When I get there, I want God to tell me. I think when we see his face, glory to God. Let me leave it alone. I think when we see his face, look upon him who saved us by his grace. What questions would we dare ask him? What difference would it make? Just to behold his face. Just to behold all that I want up in glory. It's just to behold Tanya his face. The reward. Let me close. The will of God is a delight when I am becoming all God planned for me. Jeremiah 29, 11, I close. I know the thoughts. See, now in the old church, just me quoting it would have had the saints shouting. I know the thoughts, the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Here it is to give you a future and to give you a hope. I don't know why you're still sitting there. Because God just told you he's not against you, he's for you. I need somebody to shout right there. Tell a neighbor, say, neighbor, that's the word I've been listening for all week long. That God is not against me. He's on my side. That God is not fighting me. He's fighting for me. That God is not trying to hurt me. God is trying to heal me. And God is trying to help me because God has planned. Okay, would you just look at the neighbor? Say, neighbor. Say, oh, neighbor. 
God has plans for you and all of God's plans are good for you I don't know why y'all still sitting there like a bump on a log I just told you the best news you could ever hear God has plans for you and all of God's plans are good for you and you got to learn how to shout right now even before the battle is over and before the victory is won would you tap a neighbor say neighbor the reason why I'm praising him is because his plans for me have already been established before the foundation of the world he knew me he ordained me he planned me he orchestrated me everything about my life has already been established the reason I'm shouting is because his plans are being executed even when I don't see it and I don't understand it and it doesn't make sense to me he's working it out according to Romans 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to those that are the called according to his purpose would you grab a neighbor shake their hand shake them and rock them rock them and shake them and tell them neighbor he's working it out while you're trying to figure it out while you're trying to work it out he's already gone into your future set it up come back to where you are and walk you back to where he came from because his plans are being executed but I shout today because his plans for my life will be experienced I don't care how the devil rages I don't care what fuss the enemy makes I don't care what obstacles are in my way I don't care what I've got to fight through and what I have to face because he said it it will happen would you tell a neighbor neighbor I will experience what God has for me if God promised it will come to pass my healing my breakthrough my deliverance my promotion my elevation my prosperity it has to happen because God said it he's not a man that he should lie he's not the son of man that he should repent if he said it I feel preached right there I just felt dead gray Pop Kelly, Pop Scott come up out of Rockville Cemetery and they standing behind me saying preach boy on Father's Day make us proud of what we put in you on Father's Day so hey dad hey Pop Kelly hey Pop Scott if God said it Hey, Deacon Mike, won't he do it? I've seen the lightning flashing. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice from heaven telling me, fight on. He promised. Oh, shucks. He promised never to leave me, never leave me alone. So hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on 